we're so excited and proud of this team and they just have to win. The Huskies are back in action tomorrow night in Detroit. DeKalb's Islamic population is going through some serious growing pain and why some NIU students are taking a vow of silence. We'll explain right now on NTC News Tonight. You're watching NTC News, DeKalb County's only television news source on the campus of Northern Illinois University and from the Northern Television Center. This is NTC News Tonight. It's starting to become a trend and I use hitting the road to Detroit for the third straight season and they're looking to win their second straight MAC championship. Good evening, I'm Torian Small, thanks for joining us. And I'm George Rodas. Winning the MAC championship is always the top goal, but till then, NTC's Eli Gain joined the fans as the team headed on the road. Go, go! The hype is finally here. Fans gathered outside of Husky Stadium, waving their pom-poms out in the cold and lining up the sidewalk to send the Huskies off to Detroit, a city where head coach Dave Doran is leading his team for the second straight season. We'll be up there cheering on our guys and, you know, hopefully bringing home yet another championship. Another championship would be nice, but this championship win could come with a greater reward. I think this game really gives us the opportunity to show the country that these Huskies are legit and that we do deserve an opportunity if it presents itself to go to the Orange Bowl. NIU is 21st in the BCS rankings and it has created a bigger buzz as the season winds down for NIU fans. This is an incredible team and they truly deserve our support. They're just fine young men and we have a great team. And this is a chance for all of us to celebrate and support them. With a possible Orange Bowl appearance on the line, a starting quarterback who has fans thinking Heisman, and a head coach with only three losses under his belt at NIU. The expectations are high heading into Detroit. From Husky Stadium, Eli Gain, NTC News. Thanks, Eli. Now we'll have a quick preview of tonight's uh, tomorrow night's game against Kent State later on in the newscast. It isn't uncommon for students to feel a little anxious when it comes to finals time. Angela Grippo, an NIU psychology professor, is using rodents to help find a cure for depression and anxiety. These are prairie voles, and although they look more like rats, they actually have the same characteristics as humans. Grippo has found that voles, like humans, need constant interaction to stay alive. If we knew how social stress specifically changes the brain, we could help design better treatments for people who um, are depressed or anxious or feeling some negative effects of social stress. Some theaters across the nation are having a tough time updating their equipment in the fast-changing film industry, but one local theater has kept up the pace. What used to come in on reels has now been replaced with a hard drive. The Sycamore State Theater has recently replaced their old projection equipment with a new state-of-the-art digital one. The total price tag for the new equipment runs around $200,000. The Sycamore State Theater feels the cost is worth the reward. Oh, I mean, we push play, it will play all the way through. I mean, once it's playing, you don't have to worry about it ever, you know. And the good thing is, is that you set up a schedule for the week, we set it up on Thursday, and as long as the projectors are on, they're going to play. One local business aims to strengthen the black community in DeKalb. This is the Heart Spittal. It's a new building in DeKalb that serves as a place for everyone and anyone's needs. The founder, Yolanda, hopes that the Heart Spittal will provide shelter and a place for kids to get off the streets and stay out of trouble. It's a better place than at home because my sister is always whining. My brother is always trying to get me off task with my homework. You wouldn't think it, but DeKalb's Islamic population is going through some serious growing pains. NTC's Lauren Scott has more on a new plan that will allow the Islamic residents more room for their religious practice. Imagine having to pray every week in the basement of this local park district building, or here, 
in a corner room inside of the busy home student center. This is the reality for many Muslims in DeKalb. They meet weekly here at Hopkins Park in the student center for prayer. While the Islamic community makes do with the resources they have, many hope to one day pray together under the same roof. I would like to go to the mosque because it feels different over there. Because it feels like our own place and it's much more better than praying in a room. This is why the Dakao Islamic Society is converting this house into a brand new mosque. This building only holds up to 25 people, but would host up to 100 people on days of prayer. After several complaints from the neighbors, the police shut down the mosque two years ago. The new mosque will be able to hold significantly more people and will make it possible for the Islamic community to practice their religion the way they intended. That's how it's supposed to be actually. Everyone just comes together and you know, it's a day of celebration with all your you know, uh, religious brothers and sisters. And if the project goes as planned, the new mosque will be able to hold over 100 people, bringing the separated community together. Lauren Scott, NTC News, DeKalb. Thanks, Lauren. There is no projected time for this project to be finalized, though the Islamic Association is taking donations to help fund this project. Well, semester finals are almost here, and students will be turning to quick, high-calorie meals to cure their hunger. But if counting calories and watching your weight isn't your thing, McDonald's will do it for you. The fast food chain is no longer hiding its food's nutritional content. Calorie content is provided on the menu to make people more aware of what they're eating. It hasn't really necessarily scared customers away, meaning that um, they're able to see the information so they're not coming. Um, they found that consumers, when they do come to these restaurants, they still get exactly what they came to get. NIU's late night ride services have been a reliable source of transportation for students at NIU during their nightly excursions. The school established the ride for students to have a safe way to get home when out late, but some have turned it into a taxi service. NTC's Mike Lewis tells us more. Where are you guys headed to? Uh, NIU's late night ride just picked up these passengers. It's a free and public transportation service that NIU offers to the community. Anyone can use it because it has a no questions asked policy. Riders use it to go from point A to point B. Uh, I use the late night ride service because I go out drinking with friends and we use the buses to get a ride back to our place because it's a responsible thing to do. But many students are abusing the late night ride. They're using it as a free taxi service, taking them all around town to places like Walmart, then Target. Driving to these areas increases the waiting time. As you can see, many students think that there's one car for the late night ride service. Well, in fact, there's five, and one's taking off right now to pick up some students. But even with five vans, people are still waiting a long time for a ride. To lower the waiting time, two boundaries have been made a red zone and a green zone. Anyone can get picked up in the green zone, but the red zone is more limited. You must show your NIU ID to prove you are a part of the school. Officials want the service to respond faster in the zones. So we want to get the maximum number of people, but we also want to reduce our response time. If you call, you want to ride when you want to ride. You don't want me to say, hey, well, we have a van at Walmart, we'll be there to pick you up in an hour or so. And so our job is to take care of the community as a large. Although the changes are in effect, exceptions can be made on a case-by-case -case basis. In DeKalb, I'm Mike Lewis, NTC News. Thanks, Mike. The late Night Ride uh, made the changes to make the service more efficient. A local nonprofit business in downtown DeKalb is now open for late dinner. Feed'em Soup will now be open after dark from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. on Thursdays through Saturdays. Students studying late for finals can choose from a menu of items such as burgers, sandwiches, and breakfast food. All of the money raised will help expand the Pay What You Can Wednesday dinner service. Well, it's in the talks that the Voluntary Action Center may be expanding their facility more than six times its current size. The center will team up with the city of DeKalb and receive several grants in order to fund the expansion, which may cost up to $15 million. After the expansion, Meals on Wheels will be able to provide more services to the community without having to worry about issues with space. The county board um, passed a resolution that would enable us to 
potentially secure county land. Um, they would retain ownership and we would be able to get grant money from the Department of Transportation. The expansion will allow more buses, including the shuttle to the Elburn Metro Station and Kishwaukee College. For all you music lovers out there, the Kishwaukee Orchestra is putting in its Winter Wonderland show on Saturday. The concert is at Botel Memorial Concert Hall on the NIU campus. The music starts at 7, featuring music from Haydn's Toy Symphony, and will end with a seasonal sing-along. Tickets go on sale 30 minutes before the concert and will range from $5 for kids to $15 for adults. I'm meteorologist Kyle Keel outside of our studios today and boy what a great fall day we've had nice and sunny skies just a few high passing clouds. How long will this nice weather last? I'll have your full forecast coming right up. Turning a 20-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. In Illinois, visit knowhowtogoillinois.org. You had a great Thursday and I hope you were able to get out and enjoy the weather because it was a nice fall day. We were well above average for a high temperature around 51 degrees. We saw a low this morning around 27 and our average high temperature for this date is 39 degrees. So we were well above average and that trend is going to continue as we head throughout the next few days because you can see on our radar that there's not much going on east of the Rockies but on the west coast, our friends on the west coast, they're getting a lot of rain showers and thunderstorms and even some snow and the higher elevations that's associated with the low pressure spinning in the Pacific Ocean. Fortunately, that's going to move off into Canada and not affect our weather because we have this weak surface low pressure located out to our west and that has a stationary front along it and basically the stationary front doesn't have moisture to deal with so that's why we're seeing all these sunny skies and not many clouds. But unfortunately, we could see a few more clouds as we head into tomorrow. That low pressure is going to, uh, with the stationary front, is going to sink southward giving us a little more cloud cover and off to our east you can see here in Detroit they are going to deal with some rain showers and some snow showers if you're going to support the Huskies. Northern Illinois is uh, of course playing against Kent State and we could be talking about a few rain and snow showers a high temperature around 38 degrees and kickoff is at 6 o'clock so if you are headed out make sure you bring a jacket or an umbrella it's not going to be a complete washout but nonetheless you want to be prepared for some cool weather and if you are headed back Friday night Again, more of the same pleasant conditions here. Maybe a few clouds associated with that stationary front, but that front's going to lift northward as a warm front on Saturday, bringing us some warmer conditions. And as we head later into the day, we could be talking about a few scattered showers, but most of Saturday does look pretty nice beside a few clouds. So hopefully you can get out and enjoy the weather before we get some rain into the picture. Tonight, mostly cloudy skies, patchy fog toward the morning, a low temperature of around 36 degrees as we head into tomorrow. Partly cloudy and pleasant, once again, well above average, a high temperature of around 50 degrees. Tomorrow night, again, partly cloudy skies, a low temperature of around 37 degrees. And if you caught our low at the beginning of the segment, it was our average low was 23 degrees, so we are definitely unseasonable for this time of year. And as we head into Saturday, mostly cloudy skies, a chance of some afternoon showers, a high temperature of 50 degrees, but notice those wind, or I'm sorry, 53 degrees, and those winds are going to pick up from the south at 5 to 15 miles per hour, bringing in that warm weather for the rest of the weekend. Sunday looks to be mostly cloudy, around 60 degrees, and we introduce some rain showers and thunderstorms on Monday with a high temperature of 62. And unfortunately, back down go the temperatures on Tuesday, 48 degrees. And looking past that, looks to be right around average for this time of year. That's all I have for weather. Let's head back to George and Torian at the news desk. Thanks, Kyle. You Thanks. may have noticed all over campus students are either wearing signs or placing tape over their mouth. Well, they're calling it a day of silence. Raven Ware is with us. Uh, she's the program chair for the Sisters Organization, the organization that put it together. Thanks a lot for being with us today and breaking your vial of silence to speak with us today. We really appreciate it. So, 
What's the meaning behind the Day of Silence? Um, it's in honor of all the wrongly incarcerated and convicted people in jail or prison. And um, also, a friend to a couple of us is actually experiencing this right now. So it kind of hit home for a couple of us. Mm -hmm. So outside of the obvious, um, not being able to talk, what else are students sacrificing for this vow? Um, they're sacrificing not using any um, means of social media unless it's for promoting or pubbing the event. I have to ask, is this a race issue? Um, it's more predominant in the black community, um, but actually out of 300 exonerations post-conviction, there were 187 African Americans, 86 Caucasians, 21 Latinos, two Asian Americans, and five, five race who was unknown. So what do you want to see come out of this? Um, we're hoping to try to make a change, you know, try to open people's eyes to what's going on and to show like how unjust sometimes, you know, the law can be. So there's plenty of ways to bring awareness to a cause. You guys chose silence. Why silence? Um, we tried to do something different. A lot of people do walks. A lot of people, you know, get together and they try to make a difference. But we wanted to do something a little different. And we figured if we could come together and I'll be silent, sometimes silence is the loudest thing. Are you getting any reactions from people? Um, when I went to work this morning, actually, a lot of people were asked what were going on. They actually offered to participate and in the student center as well. We got a lot of people of different races to participate as well. Are you guys planning maybe any other kind of ways of bringing awareness, maybe partnering up with any other organizations? What's next for this? Well, we actually did partner up with some other organizations today, but this is something that we can maybe make annual and maybe actually have people come out and speak who have, you know, dealt with this or have went through this. Well, thank you, Raven, for joining us today, yeah, and best of luck to you and the students that are involved in today's activity. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Syrian rebels continue to shoot down government aircraft. And somewhere out there, two people are spilling a half a billion dollars. Here's what's in today's World Watch. Syrian rebels claim they shot down a MiG fighter jet not far from the Syrian-Turkish border on Wednesday. Villagers picked pieces of the downed fighter from an olive grove. If confirmed, it will be the third time in 24 hours that rebels downed a government aircraft. It may have been the most watched TV moment in months. The selection of the Powerball numbers for that $580 million jackpot. Millions of Americans and 42 states were vying for half a billion. Lottery officials confirmed winning tickets for the cash haul were purchased in Missouri and Arizona. The Congressional Budget Offices say jobless Americans have collected more than half a trillion dollars in state and federal unemployment benefits over the past five years. Congress first enacted the federal benefits package in June 2008, but the federal checks are scheduled to stop at the end of this year. Actress Lindsay Lohan left a New York City police precinct hours after she was arrested and charged with assault. Police say she hit a woman during an argument at a nightclub. Lohan is still on probation for taking a necklace from a jewelry store without permission last year. And that's today's World Watch. The only extra question he said he's... I'm Eli Gain with NTC Sports. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. NIU versus Kent State for the MAC title. Now, both of these teams are ranked in the BCS with a possible BCS bowl game on the line. That's the Discover Orange Bowl. So not only is this game huge from a team standpoint, it's huge for the entire Mid-American Conference. Now, in a press conference earlier this week, Dave Dorn, quote, said, I know our players and their players are excited about the implications if either team could win, what it would mean to their university from a BCS standpoint. There's always a lot riding on a championship game, but maybe more in this one than normal for our conference, and that makes it even more fun as a coach preparing for this game. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape between these two teams, both going 11-1 and undefeated in MAC play. The biggest thing to look at is the turnover ratio. The Golden Flash is at plus 20 heading into tomorrow. That was first in the MAC by about a difference of 7. NIU does, however, average more points and yards per game offensively and have given up fewer yards per game defensively. And with the season Jordan Lynch is having, you may have noticed, there's no surprise that he is named the MAC MVP and Offensive Player of the Year. Lynch is the third Husky in the last three seasons to win the Vern Smith Award, following in the footsteps of Chandler Harnish and Chad Spann. The numbers he's putting up are almost jaw-dropping. He has 2,700 yards through the air, 1,600 on the ground, 39 total touchdowns. 
Lynch is also up for a top 10 finalist for the Manning Award. That goes to the nation's top overall quarterback. Lynch wasn't the only one recognized for his play this season. The All-Mac team was released this week featuring some more NIU Huskies. Five of them are named to the first team, including Jordan Lynch and his main target, Martel Moore. Sean Progard, Jimmy Ward, and Alan Baxter are representing the defense. Linebacker Tyrone Clark and offensive tackle Tyler Lose are selected to the All-Mac second team. So, big game going on. Hopefully you guys get the chance to make it to Detroit tomorrow night. I know I will be. If you can't make the trip, you can watch it on ESPN2 at 6 p.m. Central Time. That's all for NTC Sports. Let's toss it back. Thanks, Eli. Coming up, a battle to the death. Well, figuratively. We'll explain later. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you want a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet. While our football team is out there defending the MAC title in Detroit, a battle is waging on this campus. That's right, Torian, a battle you've probably seen between humans and zombies. The apocalypse has happened, um, except it starts with only one person who you can't tell is a zombie, and then they start infecting everybody else. Uh, I heard about the game at NIU uh, my freshman year. Um, Shortly after move-in week, uh, a bunch of chalkings went up around, around the residence halls. Um, I was living in Grant at the time, and me and my roommate were like, that looks really cool. Um, and so we went to one of the info meetings and went from there. Don't walk straight down Lucinda Avenue, you know, walk off to one side or the other. Either, you know, if you're going to the engineering building, you can actually cut up north through some of the back streets up there, less people up there. Or if you're going to do Sable, you cut south of the of the recreation center instead of going straight down Lucinda because it's very hard to see other zombies in a crowd. Um, you, you are constantly looking around making sure you know other players aren't getting too close because you never know another human could be that original zombie. I like HVZ is because it's a way for me to have fun while also getting outside and getting some exercise because you're running around you end up getting exercise when you're running around. Joy uh, meeting people. Um, it's a great way to meet different people. Uh, freshman year it helped me learn the campus, um, so I really enjoyed that. Um, in charge of the organization for two years, um, and so with that came certain responsibilities and being able to communicate with people and and uh, anticipating problems before they happen. Um, I did not anticipate that when I first joined HVZ as a freshman. I did not expect to become president of the organization. Uh, responsible for getting the domain for the website. Um, so that's in my name. It's still in my name. Uh, Nerf Sword, one of the many things that you can use to defend yourself in Humans vs. Zombies. Um, it's pliable. So it doesn't hurt too bad when you, when you swing it as long as you don't hit them too hard. Um, when you hit a zombie with it, they're stunned for, for X amount of time, so they can't tag anybody else. Um, plenty of other nerf items. They also have axes and maces and other things. Plenty of other things. You can also make homemade ones that are quite like this. Uh, you also have your bandana, camouflage. You can wear it on your head um, for zombie, or you wear it up on your arm for human. Uh, all of them need a strip of duct tape. Mine's orange because I was a officiator of the game. Um, regular players have silver. It's a lot of fun. I wish more people would play. The, the bigger the game, the more fun it is. Oh, wasn't that fun? 
That was NTC uh, photojournalist Kendra Smith with that piece. Really nicely done. And it was well done, like you said. It's definitely not something you see every day, but I definitely want to join in on that yeah, game. Yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. Well, that's all the time we have for you today. For Kyle Kill and Eli Gain, I'm George Rodas. And I'm Torian Small. And enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll be back the same time Monday. Thanks for watching. Thank you.